Well, the 2016 Academy Awards may go down as the most contentious and controversial ever as calls for greater diversity in Hollywood grow louder and louder. Now, according to a new University of Southern California report on diversity in media, more than half of all film, TV, and streaming shows surveyed failed to portray one speaking or named Asian role on screen. That's enough to make you want to scream, right? Well, not for Philip Fung and Julia Lam. They are channeling any and all frustrations into making a difference through A3, their nonprofit group, which fosters and supports Asian American artists in American entertainment media. Both Julia Lam and Philip Fung join me now from San Francisco to tell us more about their mission. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. Good morning. Well, listen, um, you just heard what I said about the Academy Awards. You know, it was all about the lack of diversity in Hollywood. But what's worse is that Asians are pretty much invisible when it comes to the numbers. Um, your thoughts on what's going on in Hollywood? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's a, overall a funnel problem, um, if that makes sense. So, I mean, in order to have authentic, uh, Asian American stories on screen, you need to have it through the entire funnel. So that means the screenwriters need to be able to authentically create, uh, write stories for Asian Americans. The casting director needs to be able to see an actor and be able to cast them um, at, in that role, uh, regardless of, of what the race they are. And the directors need to be able to um, uh, embrace that experience as well. So uh, you really need to see it in, uh, all through Hollywood and in order to see more diversity on screen. And also, it's not really a new problem. I mean, um, right. this has been going on for years. Yep. Um, only 1% of all uh, lead actor acting roles go to Asians. And, you know, they make up 5 to 10% of the population. Latinos the same way as well. Um, you know, only one out of every 20 um, uh, lead roles out there are given to, to, to Asian Americans, so it's, it, it's a really uh, bad number to, to begin with. Well, okay, so let's talk about why you guys decided to start A3, and it's Asian American Artists Foundation, right? You, yes, you're right. both with Facebook, so, you know, you're relatively successful, whatever. Um, so, but why, so why did you decide to do this? Why did you decide to start this foundation? So, I think like we were, you know, we, we both came from, uh, you know, after we came out of Facebook, we spent one, a very long time there. I was one of the first engineers. Julie was one, one of the first partnership people at Facebook. We spent like eight, nine years there, came out, and we're saying, hey, we've done pretty well for ourselves. What, you know, what, what are some problems that we see that we want to achieve next? And, um, you know, both of us, uh, you know, grew up in, in the U.S., and we just never saw any, you know, in, any people of color on TV. And, you know, it's, it's been like that since the 80s and 90s all, all the way up to today. And, you know, it hasn't changed at all. And we want to make sure that we can kind of make a difference in that. And, and the, you know, since we have been, been relatively successful, we want to help with that. And after talking to a lot of, uh, you know, a, a big group of our network, um, we, we actually found out that a lot of people are interested in this issue. They just don't want to talk about it, I think. And you do that, have some programs, right, at A3 that uh, uh, cultivate that. I, I think you have something called the Sundance Fellowship. Tell me about what that program is about. Yeah, so the Sundance Fellowship uh, c goes back to, like, you know, two, three years ago when we started the foundation. We wanted to find a way to make an impact. And we talked to a lot of CEOs, talked to a lot of people in the film industry as well. And everyone agrees that, you know, there, there's kind of two ways that Asians are, are kind of making a big impact. One is in, like, film and, uh, you know, more outwardly, like, uh, the, the bigger impact right now is really in digital and YouTube and things like that. But in the traditional film sense, there's, there's been, uh, it's been really hard for Asian Americans to do really well. And so we talked to a lot of, um, you know, entrepreneurs, a lot of filmmakers, and they all said, hey, why don't you start the cream of the crop? If you can get into, if a filmmaker can get into the Sundance Film Festival, um, they, they've, kind of, they've kind of got it made. They've kind of had a big leg up in their career. And we were like, okay, let's, let's talk to the executive director at Sundance and see what we can do to kind of foster that. And after kind of going through all that, we kind of came up with thinking about, um, you know, uh, why, why don't we come up with an Asian American fellowship at Sundance? Here's my question, though. Um, one of the biggest problems is that it's the decision makers at the top. It's the executives at the studio who are green lighting projects. They're the ones who say they're going to make something or they're going to buy something or not. And if that doesn't change, it doesn't matter how many stories are being made, right? How many films are being made. If they're not going to be distributed, they're just not going to see the light of day. So is, it's a structural problem, too, isn't it, when it comes to the power of how, how Hollywood is structured? 
So I think the exciting thing about this is with the rise of digital media, you have this opportunity for more stories to more segments. So you're right, in Hollywood specifically, there's one decision maker and they're trying to create content that can appease a broader audience. And the guy in middle America may or may not be interested in, you know, content that is more diversely focused. Right. So, you know, they have to make hard decisions there. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure that's that's difficult. But, you know, really, there's there's a lot of segments around that, you know, um, we're talking about Asian Americans today, but, you know, I mean, even the Latino segment, females, um, lots of other groups as well, where they're just not getting as much play on mainstream media. But again, I think with the rise of digital media, YouTube, Hulu, uh, Netflix, Amazon, you're seeing that there is, again, this, this audience that really wants uh, more diverse content, more diverse storytelling, and you see, like, the people that look like them on camera as well. If you have an Oscars where, you know, they're, ta they're touting diversity and then you could still throw in a major Asian joke in there and no one really cares, I mean, it's it's, right. it's, it's, it's really showing that the mainstream kind of traditional media is really lagging behind. Yeah. I, I mean, in the last few years, though, there has been this, this switch where, you know, I mean, Fresh Off the Boat, I mean, clearly is one of the first Asian-American sitcoms in the last 20 years. Well, Julia, um, I, was gonna, also I was actually going to bring up Fresh Off the Boat because at, at least that's an example. Of yes, a mainstream absolutely. show, right, of a mainstream show that can be seen by a broader audience. And the statistics show the demographics of the audience is actually pretty widespread. So it's not only Asians watching that show. It's across the board. So that's a proven concept right there. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I think that in the last twenty years, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, change. Um, you know, we I, we don't see as many roles as we would like in you know Asian Americans in leads. You know, again, one percent right now, but right. you are seeing Asian Americans at least on camera, at least like you know here and there as a character. Um, still not as much a screen time, but again, they're there, they're present, and so I think it finally set the scene for um, a sitcom to finally make it, and. I I think that they've done a great job throughout um, the entire process, you know, from, again, the screenwriters, you know, being a diverse set of screenwriters to casting directors to the directors to try to create something that's really authentic to the Asian culture, but that also appeals to a broader audience. And I think Fresh Off the Boat is a fantastic example of that, and I hope to see many more. Hey, Julia, Phil, I love the fact that you're doing this, and good luck to you, and we'll definitely keep in touch and see if there are improvements to come along, hopefully there will be. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank thanks you. for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, we'll be right back with this week's full frame close-up. Stay right there.